Here's something your phone has replaced. Most people would have no idea what that is. On my way to pick up some more TVs, headed up the 405. Uh, you can kind of tell things are coming back or things are being allowed to come back. People are being allowed to leave their houses again. So, uh, supposed to be 11 TVs. So here's today's project. If you want to talk about and include any of the history of them, go ahead. Or how they got here, maybe. Well, just what I've told you. In fact, it's, uh, my father had a hobby. Sylvania Electric. Curtis Mathis, made in Korea. Wow. That's kind of cool, actually. Keen TVs. Motorola. Removing the Zenith round, he revealed a few more. But they're stacked vertically, so I wonder if there's more back in here. Yeah, it looks like there is. Looks like they, they go back behind these filing caps. Wow. So as we dig into this, the paper covering these, uh, 1977, so this is about when these were probably put, oh wow, there's another one inside this one. Are you sure it's a... There is, it's a Philco 17er. He like packed them inside each other. He does have some SAMs, probably all of the SAMs. These are the 102, 103, 121. These are the service manual for probably all these TVs. Popular mechanics. speakers down here too. Yeah. He was very organized, wasn't he? Uh, when it came to this, yes. So we're going after that drawers cabinet back here. This is a tube price chart from June 1962. I hate those damn uh, silver fish. Yeah. They just ruin everything. Wow, the, the wire is just like petrified. Yeah, it's like... Wow, look at that outlet. That's kind of cool. Here we go. Nope, no do anything. Do these switches maybe turn the outlet I'm on or no? Try. Nope, nothing. This is a, I guess a nine volt transistor radio that had this battery pack wired into it. That's just insane. That that would run that. Ooh, it's a viscount. That would run that for like a year. Some old binoculars. Do 
This is a UHF converter and this is going to go in the trash because there's no use for it anymore. I just wanted to document it. Um, the point of these was so that uh, televisions without UHF, earlier televisions that didn't have UHF, could be converted to receive UHF. Well, that's an int. It's out of a fifty-seven Chevy. Out, I think that's out of the fifty-seven Chevy. And they call it a skull supporter, huh? I guess it's so. a he it's a vehicle headrest. headrest, brand new in the box. How random! This is a vintage Zenith color roundy style television, about nineteen sixty-five model year. I picked this up in a lot of thirteen TVs. Most of them were black and white upright consoles. It's a little dirty, but the cabinet on this set is about a 9.5 out of 10. It is in beautiful condition. And in a future video on this channel will be restored to working order. The chassis is all tube. It's a 24 NC31Z. And it looks like it's had the CRT changed and some other parts. So we'll restore this and get it working with a full color picture in a future video. She is a real beauty. I was trying to make a YouTube short video with that Zenith being one minute. But unfortunately, I didn't do it vertical, so it didn't qualify. But I'm going to just give you a quick rundown on what I grabbed. And I'll include a couple pictures of this awesome house uh, that much of it was period 1950. And from the LA Times that was sitting on top of these sets was mostly 1960s. So these were kind of put into storage in the early to mid 60s. So... We start, we got the blonde collection here, then we got that, whatever that is. And there will be an individual video on each one of these. But this is just a quick look at what I grabbed. This has got to be the biggest black and white I've ever seen. This is a Motorola. This is an RCA. That's a cute set. I know the lighting's poor, but that's a look at the inside. I know Dumont made a massive black and white like this, too. This is an RCA. I grabbed a couple chassis that were there. You'll see in the pictures at the end. Mercury component substitutor. 500 hour radar tube. 5 FP7A. Mercury tube tester. Uh, swimwear, sw swimwear styles like 1965. These are all LA Times that were covering the, the TVs. Radio for diagnosis, transistor radio, bunch of motor trend magazines from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. Here's the backs to most of the TVs. Here's a Fisher 500. I probably wouldn't have grabbed this except uh, Jordan Pierce said that the transformers bring a bit of coin, so I'm going to try and offload this to someone who needs those audio output transformers locally, and I need some coin. So, um, car radio, and let's see, universal video generator. Step aside, VG91, you've been replaced by the Hickox 650C. Uh, I don't know what that is, but it had a nice emblem on it. There were thousands of these popular science magazines there, all bundled up from the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Resistors, components, vintage soldering irons, can't beat that stuff. Here's an old RCA Victor gramophone. Here's a Sony, 1980 Sony Trinitron. How about this thing? An old Sylvania scope. Look at this. Massive. Just, it'll make good for a video. 
And there are three or four other smaller Packard Bell sets, radios, uh, Philco sets that I grabbed too. I've already kind of put away. And my plan with this is just do a video. I, I think I'll just triage these things. So I'll just go through. We'll just do a, oh, there's a couple more. Yeah, here's a couple more I packed away under here. There's actually two more behind these. So I think I got uh, eight of these 1950s stand-up consoles, black and white. And what I said, I'm going to just, I'm just going to go through and triage these things. If the CRTs are bad, dead, or the flybacks are dead, then fish tank it is unless someone who watches the video wants to adopt it. But we'll do a video on each one. It'll take probably over a year to get all the videos from all this stuff I picked out. The house was just so awesome the way it was stuck in about 1952 or 53 with uh, the furniture and the lights and just everything was just so cool. So yeah, take a look at the pictures at the end and you know, it shows kind of how they were stacked in this garage. And I think I'll go after this one first, right here. This big Motorola. I think this is the most interesting besides the Zenith, just at how massive it is. Philco 17er, here's a little Packard Bell astronaut. And I got a, say I'll I'll post a picture of the way that I was wrapped up the the most aggressive this there was the most aggressive dust I mean this stuff even with a P100 on my face this dust just bites I don't know how to describe it it's like old paper dust but also we got this uh kind of new in the box Curtis Mathis course made in Korea but anyway I'm um, trying to get these unloaded so that's just a little show and tell um, these will all be future resurrections that'll span over the course of the next probably two years I wonder why the plastic is still on it she never took it off. She didn't want to get it dirty. And look at that. 1950s? Yeah. They put them up when they moved in here in 57. And when was the couch? 1970s? No. Uh, 60s? Yeah, it was Because they had that before I graduated. I graduated in 68. Okay, that, that's ridiculous. With the CFL in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 